Hi guys, I'm Shane, and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom dust material in Keyshot. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's used the tutorials in their own work and tagged me on Instagram. It's been great seeing what you guys have done with them, and I look forward to seeing many more. So we're going to go through this dust material that I've used on this lamp here. It's a quick technique that I think is best suited for shots that are further away rather than macro shots. I think when you start to zoom in, you're probably better going for an actual dust texture that you can get online. Um, but the good thing about this one here is it's pretty much procedural. So it works on any model at any scale up until a point. You find that the dust itself is procedural, but it's more the, um, the way that we've taken away the dust with the fingerprints. If we go into region view, you can see that clearer. As you see, as we start to zoom in, detail isn't great uh, for realism, but you know, it does a good job when you zoom out. So if we open up our material graph here, you can see what's going on. This whole top material here is the plastic being used for the uh, lampshade. And all of this down here is our dust. And we're going to build this from scratch. So. Dust is basically loads of tiny particles, um, you know, dust particles and hair and things like that. Um, so we want to create that ourselves in Keyshot, and that's what we've done here using the spots and scratches textures. So if I just remove my imperfections that I've created there, might make things a bit easier to see. And I'm also going to adjust my color to black just to make it really easy to see the dust so if we delete out our material here we can start again so all you're going to do is right click go to your materials and add in a new diffuse material and connect this to the label here and that adds the material to the whole of the object and basically what we're going to do is mask out this material using various textures to create that kind of dusty look so you might want to adjust the color here, make it a little bit closer to white. And the first thing we're going to add is our textures and our spot texture. So if you double click on that and press C on your keyboard, then you can isolate the mapping information. With opacity, everything that's black is hidden and everything that's white shows through. So we want to flip these. So we want to make our spots white and our background black and our white spots are going to be our dust particles. So if we plug that into the opacity, you can see what that's doing there. It doesn't look very realistic, but bear with me. So we want to add some distortion. We want to increase the levels because we're going to go for a very dusty surface. We're also going to reduce the radius and increase the fall off. We're going to massively increase the density to eight. So we've got a lot of particles going on now. And then we're also going to go into the levels, take that level scale down so that they're more uniform in size. And then bring our scale down. Let's try 0.1. So as you can see, starting to look quite dusty. One thing that I like to do is with my background, not make it absolute black and just make it almost like a dark gray. And what this will basically do is fill in the gaps uh, in between our dust particles. So when you're looking at a dusty surface from far away, all of the particles mix together so closely that it does just look like a gray. So that's a, you know, a quick thing we can do here, which isn't quite realism because in reality it would be lots of little tiny particles, but it does the job, as I said, if we're a bit zoomed out. So what I'm actually going to do here is open up that color and I'm actually going to store it for later and you'll see why. So I'm going to duplicate our spots texture and I'm going to pop that into the background. That will basically allow us to combine these two maps. So what I'm going to do here is increase the scale up and this is just going to give us some bigger particles here. That's probably too big so let's go for 0.3. Now, if we look at this texture here, you can see how we've got a mix of small and large particles. And just doing it this way gives you that extra bit of control 
that levels wouldn't give you and it also gives us more particles so our surface is going to look even dustier so if i remove it there you can see it with and without so then the last thing for the dust material is to go back into your textures into scratches and we're just going to play with some of the settings here add in a bit of noise um, increase the thinness and the fall off I'm going to bring the density down because we don't want these hairs to be too frequent so I'm going to go for mm, let's try one and I think I'm actually okay with the scale as it is all we need to do is flip these colors around again so get your background color and choose that gray that we saved already and then same again just add that into the background so you can see here we've got our larger clumps of dust with the hairs and then here we've got all of them combined which all combines to create quite a nice looking dusty surface with a mixture of sizes and uh, textures so the next step here is to mask this out so if we zoom out you can see it is looking quite dusty if i just let that res up a bit so we just want to mask out different areas of this make it look like someone's wiped away a bit of the dust which again just makes it look a that little bit more realistic so how we're going to do this is we're going to add a color composite utility so click the connection right click utility color composite firstly I'm going to show you how to do it procedurally so right click textures granite so if you double click and press C on that change your color to white so that we get a grayscale texture and plug that into the background let's change our blend mode to multiply and that will carry through all the dark values of the granite and that's going to combine with our dust here and all these dark values are going to have less dust on there so it should look like the dust is getting wiped away let that res up as you can see there's some areas which are less dusty than others if you click that connection right click and add a color to number we can also accentuate that so take your input from and increase that this uh, this utility works a bit like the levels slider in Photoshop so you can make your increase the coverage of your blacks increase the coverage of your whites you can also uh, make your blacks a bit closer to gray and your whites a bit closer to gray so we're just gonna leave that as it is now and as you can see that's done the extreme there and uh, all those dark values have just taken away the dust here and as i said this is fully procedural so as all of these are just textures within keyshot um you can scale them up as as large as you want and they'll never uh, never get pixelated or anything like that but now i'm going to show you how to do it with image textures which i think looks a little bit more realistic so i'm going to go into my library here and drag in the dusty painted metal and as you can see if I scale this down a bit and if we just increase the contrast so that we can really see it here you can see we've got these seam lines which don't look great and a quick fix for that is to use a triplanar so if you go into textures and triplanar what we can do is drag this image into one of the projections and this allows us to blend the seams again this this isn't a great um solution for everything but it, it it's a good quick fix um which will blend those seams and have them looking a lot less noticeable so if you bring that to zero you can see these harsh lines here bump that back up to two and it's much more blended so that helps it to to, to work on a on a texture that isn't seamless so if we drag that into our background click the connection and add in our color to number again and we just adjust some of the values here let's probably remember to take your contrast down um i think that's good let's run with that so as you can see we've got now areas which have taken away the dust and i think using that image texture just makes it look a little bit more realistic than uh than the granite texture so just to add a little bit more detail as well we're going to add in another color composite and another triplanar and this time i'm going to use a smudges texture which i found online 
So again, you want to drag it in onto your projection. If I view that and let's scale that down, uh, if we took, took away blend seams, you can see these seam lines are back. So again, that just blends them nicely. I'm going to add this back into the background and multiply. What we actually want to do in this case, because that's only going to have dust in the fingerprints, we want to flip it. So add in another color to number. Take this output two and set it to zero and the output one, set it to one and that will flip the texture and then just bring your input two down to increase the, the intensity of those fingerprints. So something like that I think works fine. And now if we let that res up. You can see we've now got some fingerprints that appear. So that's the combination of the two textures. Take away that, you can see in there. And the good thing about this is you can decrease your background alpha. So maybe you don't want those fingerprints to come through so heavy. So then the last thing that you can do is you can add a color to number right on the end there. And this will just allow you to further refine your maps. So if you want to increase the amount of, uh, or sorry, decrease the amount of dust that's shown, or if you want to increase it, um, you can also play with these opacity values here. So if we take this down to 0 0.6, that will reduce the intensity of our dust, or we can even put it up to two to increase it if it's not looking dusty enough. And that's pretty much it for the dust material. I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you check out my website, shanespensdesign.co.uk for downloadable assets and follow me on Instagram to stay up to date with my work at shanespensdesign.co.uk.